Let's say that you track form submissions with Google Tag Manager. You see the success message, but the ID of the form is somewhere higher in the website's code. So out of the box, you cannot access it, at least in most cases. But with some JavaScript magic, this is possible. And let me show you how to do that. First, let me show you the setup, the problem, and then I will explain the solution to that problem. So here I have a demo page with a form. And if I submit it, then it will show a success message that looks like this. I can do the right click, then inspect. And this is the message, which is a child of an element with a class success. So in Google Tag Manager, I am using an element visibility trigger, which is looking for appearances of any element with the class success. So in CSS, every class starts with a dot, which means that dot success is looking for elements with the class success. However, this element does not contain any form IDs. And with the form submission, I would like to send the form ID. In my case, that ID is somewhere higher. In fact, it is available right here. Out of the box, Google Tag Manager cannot access that ID, but with a little piece of JavaScript, this is possible. So for this method of tracking that I will show you to work, that ID must be somewhere at the higher level than the element that you're tracking. So we are tracking this element, and then if we go one level up, then one level up, and one level higher, this is what we want to access. In this case, we need to get that 16 value. So first we need to come up with a CSS selector that will target this element. And in our case, that could be a div element that contains an attribute data form ID. And we don't care about the value. We just care that this attribute is in that div. So we can go to console, then clear it, and then type this document, query selector all, and then we can enter that CSS selector. So first of all, it's div. And right now you can see that just by looking for divs, we will get a list of 53 elements, but we need to be more specific. We're looking just for those divs that have this particular attribute. So I will copy this attribute, then go back here. And then if you want to target an element with CSS selectors, and you want to get an element that contains the attribute, then you will need to write it like this. So this CSS selector will be looking for divs that have this attribute regardless of their value. And now if I click enter, I will get a list. And this list is very short because it just has one element. Now, if I expand it, then scroll down, here I should be looking for some parameter that contains the form ID. And here it is. It is in the data set because our attribute starts with the word data dash something means that the attribute will appear in the data set. So if I expand data set, I will find my form ID and its value is 16. So now I can update my code just to verify that I can access that form ID. So I will go here. And instead of selector all, I will enter just selector. So this will return the first element. And here I will need to enter dot data set because I want to access that particular data set right here. And then inside that data set, I want to get form ID. So now I will enter dot form ID. I hit enter, and this is the value that I want to get. So we know the key that we want to access, and we know the CSS selector of that element that we are interested in. So this is a very good start. Now let's go to Google Tag Manager. And we are going to create a JavaScript variable that will fetch the right element. So to achieve that, first you must enable the click element variable in the built-in variables. If you don't see that element right here, you will need to click configure and then enable that variable right here. Then let's go to user defined variables, click new variable configuration, and then custom JavaScript variable. Here I will enter an anonymous function that returns something. So this is the basic requirement for this variable to work. And then here's what will happen. So when that success message appears on the website, our Google Tag Manager element visibility trigger will track that. And then once that element is tracked, it becomes available as the click element in Google Tag Manager. For example, if I go to Tag Assistant, click my element visibility, and then I go to variables, here in the click element variable, I see that 
it is targeting this particular success message. So the code that we will write will start looking for the correct element from this starting point, which is our success message. So what we need to do is that we want to return the value starting from the click element, which is our success message. And then from that element, which is right here, we want to climb up and find the closest element that is a diff with this attribute. We already have that selector right here. So I will copy this selector. So here it is, then copy. And then I will use a method called closest. When a success message appears, we will be looking for the closest element and we will start climbing up the document object model. And then this method accepts a CSS selector. So when the success message appears, Google Tag Manager will climb up the document object model of the website, basically, which is like a structure of various elements. And then it will be looking for an element that matches the CSS selector. In our case, that element is this one right here. But that is not enough because then when we reach this element, we want to fetch its particular value, which is data form ID. So we have already done that, which is dot data set dot form ID. I will copy this and then I will paste it right here. So when the success message appears in the browser window, the element visibility trigger will be activated and it will return the actual element, which is the success message. And then from that element, we will start climbing up and we will be looking for a div that contains this attribute. Once that element is accessed, then we will drill down inside that element and we will be looking for data set. And inside that data set, we will be looking for the form ID. And that is our code that we are going to use. So let's name this variable and click save. Now let's test if this is working. So click preview. And now I'm going to submit the form once again. So let's fill in all the fields, click send message, and the success message appeared. Now if I go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, click element visibility, and go to variables, my custom JavaScript variable will return 16. Ignore this one because it looks like there's a bug in Google Tag Manager preview mode. Sometimes it shows the correct variable type, sometimes not. But nevertheless, this is working. So now I can go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, and update my Google Analytics 4 event tag because I already have configured that in the past. Right now, this tag is sending just the event, but together with that event, I could also send an event parameter, which could be called form ID and I will insert my custom JavaScript variable. Click Save, and let's test everything. So click Preview. The preview mode is connected. Now I will go to the website and submit the form again. Click Send Message, and let's go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. I will click the Element Visibility event. Then I see that my tag has fired, and if I click it, and I switch to Values, I will see that together with that event, I'm sending form ID and its value is 16. If the ID of this form was something different, then the variable would have fetched that particular value right here. And now I can go to Google Analytics, then debug view, and then I should see that event eventually appear right here. And here it is. So I click form submission. And here's that event. If I click it, I will see that form ID contains the value. Right now, when I'm recording this video, form ID is not available as a built-in dimension in Google Analytics 4. And you can check that by going to Explore, selecting a freeform exploration, and then in the dimensions, click plus and enter form ID. And in my case, I'm not seeing it. If you are also not seeing it, then it means that you should register a form ID event scoped custom dimension if you want to use that form ID in your reports. You can do that by going to admin, then custom definitions in the custom dimension section, click create custom dimension and then enter form ID, keep the scope event and here enter form ID. This is the exact name that I have in my tag right here. If you entered something different here, then that something must also be entered exactly right here and then click save. Then go to Google Tag Manager, publish your changes by clicking this button and then completing all the process. And after that, wait for 24 hours. 
After your visitors submit the forms and some time passes, then that data will be available in your Google Analytics 4 interface. By the way, speaking of that closest method, it is supported by all modern browsers, for example, Chrome, Edge, it is not supported by Internet Explorer, but that one is no longer available, so this is not a problem. It is not supported by Opera Mini, but very few visitors around the globe are using it. So I accept the fact that the closest method will not work for these users because, well, there are not many of them, so your data quality will not suffer that much. But as for other modern browsers, they support this method, which means that you can definitely use it in your setup. And that is how you can use the closest method in Google Tag Manager. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.